Distilled shenanigans, Irish distilled shenanigans. Today, we are going to be looking at two Irish whiskeys that I have not tried, even though it looks like it. I actually gave a friend of mine a pour of this a couple weeks ago, but did not try it because I wanted to wait until this episode for it to be my first. So we've got Bushmills, single malt whiskey, aged 10 years and we've got the very highly rated red breast 12 so let's let's see what we have here first up we are going to take a look here at the bushmill single malt 10 year this irish whiskey is 100% malted barley, hence the name of single malt. Kind of self-explanatory on this one, means it's not going to be blended with anything else. Um, it's distilled in a pot still, which it will say right on the label. Or it won't say it right on the label, but it is a single malt. It is triple distilled, even though the Irish rules for whiskey does not require them to be triple distilled. A lot of the distilleries do that. You'll get a smoother whiskey when they're triple dis distilled because you get some of those impurities out, which we talked about in one of our first episodes in Distilled Shenanigans and what the distilling process does and how you get the, the tails and the um, all the things out. And I can't remember, so I'm going to have to stop talking about it because I forget what the first part says. The tails and the... Shit. I don't know. So this, like the Jameson and Tullamore Dew Irish whiskeys, these are also finished in casks that used were used for bourbon and sherry. So that's kind of where some of those Irish whiskeys are getting that red hue from, is from those sherry casks. This particular whiskey, which you can tell in this beautiful bottle here, is a nice amber gold to it with just like a little hue of red in there. And let's go in to see what she smells like. I smell a little honey. I feel like I smell some bright fruit, maybe some cherry. Definitely vanilla. I feel like there's always vanilla. I will be interested to see when I get one, get a bourbon or a whiskey aged in oak that doesn't smell like vanilla. Because I just want to know, is there one? Can there be one? We'll find out. Um, a little bit, I feel like there could be a little bit of apple in there. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm smelling, smelling something interesting. I want, like, I'm all smelling a green Jolly Rancher with this one. I didn't, I didn't believe it. I've read it some places that that's what you could smell but I believe it now. I definitely do not taste chocolate. If anybody tastes chocolate in this, please let me know, because I'm not, it's not a flavor I'm getting. Tasting the vanilla, I'm tasting the cinnamon. Definitely sweet, oh man. That Jolly Rancher on the nose is fantastic. It tastes a little oaky to me. Definitely a little bit of that earthy undertone. Um, it's a nice balance. This one is smooth and gentle, but like nicely balanced. It has a nice clean finish, but it's not like creamy. <laughs> um, I'm going to appreciate having this in the collection for sure. Ooh, could sip on that all night. Now, a little bit of interesting history with the Redbreast 12. It originally got its name because back in the late, teen, late 1880s, it was aged in sherry casks for at least six years. And during that time frame, that sherry really turned the color of the whiskey a nice deep red color and people likened it to a robin redbreast and, and it has been delivered to your table as a 12 year starting in 1912. There are 
multiple other years beyond the 12, but the 1912 is when the 12 year was first released. So this is also a single pot stilled, distilled whiskey aged in former bourbon and sherry casks. I think we're starting to see a little bit of a theme here with the Irish whiskey. The aroma smells a little bit sweeter than the Bushmills. Oh yeah. This is kind of going back to that vanilla baking bread Maybe like a chocolate banana bread. I smell chocolate in this one. I did not smell chocolate in, in the Bushmills. I don't know if it was too subtle, but I smell like chocolate banana bread in the nose on this. You smell the caramel and the toffee, like bananas fosters. Oh man, I feel like I'm going to have to go get dessert here after this. <laughs> um, okay, let's see what we have in the taste. So this is coming back to the more creamy texture like the Tullamore Dew had. Pot still whiskey tends to be known for that quote unquote oily texture. I don't know. I definitely taste that in the front. Um, and then leaving to that vanilla and caramel on the back. Apparently doing four tastings in a row might not be the best. For my overall palette, I'd like to come back to this one after not trying so many. This has got a fun finish. It's kind of got that smooth texture. You hit it hits the back of the palette. Mm, not a whole lot there. And as you it continues down, it kind of builds into a beautiful long finish that we kind of miss in some other whiskeys. Uh, definitely tasting the malt and maybe a little bit of earthy. Like if you nod on a toothpick for too long and you get kind of that woody flavor, that is kind of the wood I'm talking about. It's definitely not oaky. Like I kind of, I kind of like it. Yeah, I could stand behind that. But this Red Breast 12 and the Bushmills, definitely a good way to go if you are out and about and celebrating a little Irish heritage or just in the mood to try something new, I think both of these could be a good way to go. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of the Irish shenanigans. I hope you have a great day. Cheers.